Congratulations, Dallas Cowboys fans. The funny thing is that some Cowboys fans actually thought that I was going to shut my channel down because the Dallas Cowboys backed up what Mike McCarthy had promised and, of course, saying that the Dallas Cowboys would win this game. Hey, guess what? I would not make this channel if, if I thought that the only way I would ever put videos out is if my team won. Obviously, I wouldn't have much of a channel because, you know, my team doesn't always win. That being said, it's football. So, you know, my hat's off to the Dallas Cowboys. However, you have to think that you were getting a little a little nervous there in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it was, it was awfully easy to sit back and be excited about this game when you're up 24 to nothing. And then turn around and get outscored... 20 to 3 in the second half of the game Washington coming back and very nearly coming back to tie this game I mean you had to have been a little bit worried in in this game for sure but yeah uh, you know Mike McCarthy backed it up um you know he said that he was going to win this game he won the game um, you know, Dallas has a very strong defense. They have a very stout defense. Uh, you know, this is uh, definitely something that has improved for them uh, since last year. Uh, Micah Parsons was just a beast. I mean, we'll have, I'm, honestly, I'm going to be having nightmares about Micah Parsons. Uh, you know, Cowboys fans, you definitely have a great, great uh, player in Micah Parsons. Uh, I would be extremely surprised if he does not win Defensive Rookie of the Year this year because, or if not Player of the Year, I mean, he is definitely uh, somebody who is worth the draft pick. And um, so, yeah, my hat's off to him. He played, he played really well in this game. Um, you know, Washington, for the most part, they struggle in offense uh, mightily. They could not get much of a running game going. Uh, they had turnovers. You cannot expect to win a football game when you turn the ball over. On the, the uh, defensive side of the football, I mean, you know, Washington actually played pretty well, despite the fact that they were really thin. I mean, they were down to basically their fourth string defensive ends. And yet, you know, the defense held held their own. I mean, Dak Prescott really did not have that great of a day today. And, you know, I mean, all it takes is the win, of course. But, um, you know, the, Dallas's offense struggled at times as well. They were very op opportunistic, I think. Um, you know, when the Washington offense is turning the ball over, giving you short fields, certainly you're going to capitalize. You know, Washington could not capitalize any time that they had a turnover except for late in the fourth quarter when Cole Holcomb intercepted Dak Prescott and took it for a pick six. I mean, that definitely got me excited. I really felt even after a horrible game the entire game, Washington still had a chance to come back and at least tie this game. So it was, it was very impressive in that part. But uh, Washington is definitely beat up. Now, if we go to the uh, game stats, um, you know, we'll see that if we look at Dallas, of course, Dak Prescott, uh, 22 for 39 for 211 yards, one touchdown, uh, one intercept or two interceptions, I should say. Uh, uh, Zeke Elliott had 12 carries for 45 yards, averaged around 3.8 yards per carry. Um, Corey uh, Clement um, had 13 carries, actually had more than Elliott for 44 yards. So both of them pretty much produced exactly the same amount of production. Um, Dak Prescott had a few few rushes as well. Um, C.D. Lamb, the Dallas Cowboys had a couple of plays where C.D. Lamb lined, lined up in the backfield and um, had two carries for 15 yards. Um, C.D. Lamb also had uh, seven receptions for 61 yards. Um, Michael Gallup had five uh, receptions for 60 yards. Amari Cooper 
had five receptions as well for 51 yards and one touchdown. Um, like I said, the defense just kind of fed on Washington all day long. Um, just really wreaked havoc. Eventually um, got our uh, center, uh, Tyler Larson, hurt and then hurt Taylor Heineke. Heineke had to go out of the game. Uh, Kyle Allen came in finished the game. Uh, we look at the stats. We see Taylor Heineke had 11 of 25 for 122 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Kyle Allen was four for nine for 53 yards. Uh, Antonio Gibson, uh, 10 yards for 36, or 10 carries for 36 yards. Uh, he had that critical fumble, which really just um, really put the, the team in a bind. And he was pretty much benched the rest of the game because of that. And that was in the third quarter. Uh, Jarrett Patterson had four carries for 29 yards. Jonathan Williams, who was activated off of the practice squad, had four carries for 16 yards and that one touchdown. Uh, Kyle Allen had a couple of um, uh, scrambles. Uh, one was for a, a first down scramble. And Taylor Heineke had three scrambles for eight yards. Uh, Cam Sims had three receptions for 69 yards and a touchdown. Adam Humphreys um, had the majority of the uh, passes to him for 34 yards. But the biggest still was Terry McLaurin. No catches today. The one big catch he could have had, he had to jump up so high to grab that catch, came crashing down, the ball, of course, popped out, and that was the play in which... Unfortunately, Taylor uh, or Terry McLaurin, I should say, uh, suffered a concussion. And so now we don't know if we're going to have McLaurin for the uh, Eagles game. We're going to have to really watch and see if McLaurin can bounce back, if this concussion is going to be serious, uh, what's going to happen with that. Um, Diama Brown, of course, nothing as well. Curtis Samuel didn't have any catches. So... Uh, DeAndre Carter almost had that huge catch. Um, but Kyle Allen threw a perfect pass downfield, and DeAndre Carter nearly caught that. Uh, that would have been a, definitely the game changer. Had Carter held on to the football with that, I really feel like Washington would have scored a touchdown, would have tied this ball game up, and we would have looked at a game possibly going into overtime or at least being decided on the field goal attempt. So uh, that was definitely a game changer because the next down was um, fourth down and it was fourth and three. And of course the controversial, was it a fumble? Was it a forward pass? Certainly you ask all of us Washington football fans, we're going to say that was a forward pass. The referees called it a fumble on the field. Um, it was very close. They didn't overturn it. Dallas recovered. Pretty much that's what sealed the game uh, for the Washington football team. So, you know, that was very disappointing. Other aspects of the game, certainly. Um, that one incident where, uh, was it uh, Leal uh, Collins, um, the uh, offensive lineman for the Dallas Cowboys, um, starts swinging and throws punches because he thought that Dak Prescott got hit late out of bounds, which he did not. It was a legal hit, and he got, you know, he started throwing punches and, of course, you know, got ejected from the, the football game. Uh, so, you know, people are saying that there's not much of a, a rivalry left in this, you know, between you know, Redskins, Cowboys. That's not true. That's not true. Both of these teams still very much hate each other. And so, you know, having um, having the game like, like we saw today, it was a tell of two games, certainly. Um, Taylor Heineke did not play well at all. He kind of went back to his, his gunslinger, I'm going to take, take the chance, I have to put the team on my back sort of mentality because the team, you know, fell behind early. One of those was his fault where he fumbled. Um, was it a fumble? Yes, he fumbled. And Dallas picked it up, ran it in for the for a touchdown. You know he didn't play well at all. Um, he played well, yeah. He just didn't play well at all. Kyle Allen came in, played pretty decently. I felt um, 
you know, just uh, overall, it was just a horrible game for the Washington football team. Uh, to fall behind by that much early on really, you know, put them in a huge hole. Uh, but you take a look at it, they pretty much shut the Dallas Cowboys down their offense could not get anything going in the second half. So, you know, Jack Del Rio's defense, as thin as it was, did a pretty decent job the entire game. It's just the offense really did not help him out one bit whatsoever. We could also talk about the referees and a lot of the calls they, they made. Um, I felt, um, and well, Ron Rivera felt as well, that uh, the play in which Taylor Heineke got hit low and got injured, um, felt that that was kind of a cheap shot. I thought it was a cheap shot. Nothing was called. Um, you know, and, and I'm just seeing this more. It seems like as you start to get closer to the end of the season, I'm seeing this in general about any any team, it almost seems as if you have certain teams that are, are getting hot and are, you know, trying their best to um, make a late season run you got other teams that are like, okay, this this guy is a problem. This other guy is a problem. We need to do something. Last week, you know, Logan Thomas had that uh, cheap shot. I felt with with his knee was was very near an ACL tear. And he's out for the rest of the season. Looked like they tried to do the same thing to Taylor Heineke today. Um, I just you know can't say it's blatant, but it seems like it is a lot of times. Um, you know, what better way to make sure that certain pesky teams that uh, can really wreak havoc if they just have a chance to get into the playoffs, um, seems like they, they, they're they the ones that kind of have the targets on their, their backs. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but overall, you know, yeah, certainly uh, Dallas dominated this football game for about three quarters, and then they collapsed in the fourth quarter. So if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, certainly you're happy because you beat a rival, but you're still not happy because you almost let this game fall straight through your hands. You had this game firmly in grasp, and this game was almost lost. And, you know, and that's against a defense that was very light, that was starting their fourth uh, uh, on the depth charts, basically. They're... they're Four string defensive ends um, just had people out everywhere on offense. We've had people shuffled on, um, you know, the offensive line. No Logan Thomas, uh, Terry McLaurin getting knocked out of the ball game. Um, so I mean, you almost let the Washington football team back in this game to tie it up. So you know. I wouldn't be completely confident if I was you. And guess what? We've got you again in a couple of weeks. So who knows? Uh, the Washington football team might be healthier by then. Uh, we'll see what happens. we got to play the Philadelphia Eagles next week. That's going to be another tough game for the Washington football team. It's going to be a must-win game. If the, if Washington wants to remain in, in firm control of a playoff spot, they need to keep winning. They've got to be able to beat the Eagles. Um, I think that Washington can still get in at 9-8, and eight, but they're going to have to continue to win. Um, I think they can only afford to maybe drop one game, and that's it. And at that point, it might be where they need a lot of help. Having said all that, uh, summary, this game was certainly... Um, like I said, it was certainly a rough game to watch if you're a Washington football fan. Um, but the positives that I can say is that, look, you know, this team keeps fighting. Even when you know that for all intents and purposes, the game is probably lost, this team finds some way to come back and to at least make a, a game of it before it's all said and done. They were left for dead in this game, and they came back and very nearly came back to tie this game. And... You know, that says a lot about the fortitude of this team and the fortitude of Ron Rivera. I mean, he is one of the best coaches, in my opinion, in this league. And, of course, I'm going to say that because I'm a Washington football team fan who has Ron Rivera's head coach. But you would not have seen this with a Jay Gruden coach team. If Jay Gruden was in there and the team was down 24 nothing, the game would have been like 41 to nothing at the end of the game. He just would have folded 
Uh, Ron Rivera does not fold, and this team doesn't fold because of it. Um, so, you know, that I'll say that, you know, this team has fortitude. They don't, they don't stop. They have a lot of fight in them. Um, some positives, hopefully, next week. Hopefully, we're going to get uh, Montez Sweat back, which we will desperately need him back, um, along with um, was it Smith Williams, um, the rest of the guys off the COVID list. Uh, we're going to need some some more help there at the defensive end area. So having Montez Sweat back is going to be huge for for that defense. Um, hopefully, we'll get a little bit healthier on offense as well. Um, J.D. McKissick, we need him back badly. To get him back would be great. We do have to to see what's going to happen with Terry McLaurin. We've got to have him down the line as well. So hopefully Terry McLaurin is able to, to play against the Eagles. Um, but I really feel that, you know, there were a lot of negatives, but there were a lot of positives in this game as well. you got to see that this this team, they I mean, they don't have – very many of their projected starters in there now. I mean, you know, Logan Thomas out for the season, Chase Young out for the season, Montez Sweat has been out for most of the season. You know, and the list goes on and on, shuffling people around that offensive line, yet they have found ways to win. And, you know, I, just buckle up. There's four games left in this season. They're all NFC East games and Washington still controls their own destiny. And guess what, Dallas Cowboys fans? Congratulations for today. Just enjoy it while you can because we're coming back for you in two weeks, and don't be surprised if we don't bring our own bench as well. 